Everybody in agreement with this said amen, amen, and amen. Somebody give God one last hand clap of praise. Amen. And look, I'm going to jump right in. I'm so excited to preach this word to you. I'm going to take your attention to the book of 2 Samuel. Take your attention to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23. I'm only going to read a few verses today. I'm going to read from the Living Bible first. That may be an uncommon translation, but it is uh, one that I believe articulates the heart of this passage so well. 2 Samuel chapter 23 verses 20 through 23. We see in this particular passage of scripture the exploits of David's 30 mighty men put on display. David had some soldiers that came around him when he was in a cave season, when he was in a wilderness season, and the exploits of these particular soldiers, Pastor Lauren, begin to be named, and, uh, and, and they get to one particular individual named Benahiah. This is what it says about Benahiah. It says, there was also Benahiah, son of Jehoda, a heroic soldier from Kazil. Benahiah killed two giants, sons of Ariel of Moab. Another time he went down, here it is, into a pit. And despite the slippery snow on the ground, took on a lion that was caught there and killed it. Killed it. Somebody say killed it. I want to jump down to verse 23. He was one of the greatest of the 30, but was not actually one of the top three. And David made him chief of his bodyguard. David made him chief of his bodyguard. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation really quick, just verse 20. New Living Translation, just verse 20. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20 says, There was also Benahiah, son of Jehoda, a valiant warrior from Kazil. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. I want to preach today from this simple thought as briefly as I have chased the lion. Look at your neighbor and say, chase the lion. Say it to somebody else, say, chase the lion. As I begin to think about our particular time that we have together today, I begin to think about my love for movies. I don't know if anybody loves movies like me. Any movie fans in the room, let me see you. Okay, okay, I got a few people who are with me today. I love movies. I love the storyline of movies. I love following along the plot and the characters. I love a good mystery and trying to guess what happens before it happens. Can I get an amen, anybody? I love a movie that keeps me guessing. I love movies. Here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. Recently, I was having a conversation with someone who asked me, Vernon, I know you love movies. Is there any genre that you particularly don't like? After brief consideration, Lance, here's what I responded to them. I said, you know, I really don't like horror movies. I know, I know, don't judge me. It's not my preferred genre. Now, let me tell you why before you judge me. Let me tell you why I don't particularly like horror movies. I struggle with looking at a film and the whole time I'm frustrated because the actions of the main character suggest no common sense. I, I get frustrated uh, uh, when I'm watching and over and over again, I'm looking at somebody and here's what I'm saying in my head. Why are you going in there? Why? Do oh, that don't make no sense. It frustrates me to watch something for an extended period of time that just doesn't seem like it makes any sense. But here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. He didn't ask me, well, Vernon, why do you like action movies? He said, because in action movies, we see a character do some things that don't make sense either. I mean, in action movies, let's think about it like the main character injured will still go into battle knowing that he shouldn't win. The main character will go in by themselves or with a few people uh, unarmed or armed with only a limited amount of resources and we cheer them on. Or maybe they've been beaten, they know they're outnumbered and they know that everything about Thor and everything about all the, 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 the people they're facing, we know should defeat them and yet we champion them and yet we cheer them on and yet we celebrate them. And as I begin to think about this paradigm that this person introduced to me, I begin to ask myself, why is it? that there's a different genre but a different expectation. And here's what I reconcile. Can I tell you what made sense to me? I started to recognize that it wasn't because my expectations were based on who was fighting. My expectations were based on what they were fighting. Let me tell you again. I'm going to say it again. It was because I recognized that I had confidence in the who. 
I didn't matter what the what was. In other words, it doesn't matter what Black Panther is going up against because I know who is fighting. I got confidence in what he is fighting. I know that he will be victorious because I trust the who. I begin to think about that today and begin to think about all of us in this room as we begin to prepare for the year coming. And I begin to think about who we are and who we have the potential to be. That the real conversation for us today is not what we will fight. It's who will show up to the fight. It's the confidence that you will carry to the fight. It's the courage that you will carry to the fight. It's the perspective that you will carry to the fight. That the truth of the matter is we will not be absolved from battles. But what we can do is walk into the battle differently because we know who we're fighting with. And when you know who you're fighting with, you can look at a giant and say, I'm still going to kill that. When you know who you are fighting with, Lauren, you can look at a sea and be like, God can open that. Why? Because I got history with this God. And because I have history, I can have confidence. I begin to think about this character named Benahiah. He, he, he's an obscure passage in Scripture. I doubt many of us learned about him in Sunday school. I doubt many of us talked about him in systematic theology for all my seminarians. Uh, our doctrine isn't really built on the foundation of him, yet a passage with so much inspiration and instruction is found nestled in the Old Testament in the book of 2 Samuel. This valiant warrior chased down a lion on a snowy day. Now, first of all, I would have been canceled out because on a snowy day, I would have stayed at home. But on a snowy day, he finds the courage to go out to brave the elements and then he arrives at a place where he sees a lion, chases it down, and engages in battle. And I had to imagine to myself just like watching a feature film. I mean, just like if we read this text together, I just imagined that as I read it or as they heard about the story, it was like watching a horror film. I got to imagine they said Benahiah goes out, Frank, and then he was going and doing what he was doing. And then all of a sudden, he saw a lion. And then we would all be watching the movie and be like, Benahiah, turn around. But no, ben Hyde does not do what we say he should do. He does not do what we think is reasonable. What does he do? He decides to chase the lion. Then after chasing the lion, he jumps down into a pit. Locking eyes with the lion, I believe all of us would have been like, now look, ben Hyde, stop playing. Get on out this pit. What does he decide to do? He decides to fight the lion. Taking on what looks like it should be his greatest obstacle and decided that the lion, watch this, was not an obstacle, but an opportunity. He decided that the lion was not there to take him out, but the lion was there to increase his reputation. He decided that the lion was not something that he should turn away from, but it was really not about his failure, it was about his future. Can I tell you something today? There's a lion in your life right now that you've been running from and God is ready for you to face. There's a lion in your life right now that you've been scared of that God is saying it's time for you to find strength. There's a lion that has been making you cowardice, but God is saying I'm trying to make you courageous. There's a lion that you've been looking at, that you've been locking eyes with, that you've been running from, and God said now is the time for you to start chasing that which you ran from. Now is the time for you to start pursuing that which used to be a problem. Now is the time for you to find the courage to say I know everybody's panicking, I know everybody's afraid, but if God be for me, it's more than the world against me, so give me the lion, I'm going to show it who I am and who I'm with. There's a lion in all of our lives, metaphorically, that we're called to tame. For some of you, it's the pain of your past, a lion that you're called to tame. For some of you, it's that entrepreneurial endeavor that you've been holding off on because of fear or insecurity. God is calling you to go after it. I can't tell you what your lion is today. I just came to let you know today that God is ready for you to chase the lion. Here's why, big idea today, because taking no risk is the greatest risk of all. Some of us, we need to understand this today, that taking no risk is the greatest risk of all. What are some places in your life where you've settled for comfort when God is calling you to greater? What are some places in your life where you've allowed fear to be the narrative instead of faith? What are some places in your life where you've allowed the past failure to prevent you from the future victory? 
What is the place in your life where you allowed the lion to roar and then you ran away when really God said, no, 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 the roar of your heart is greater than what you hear. The roar of your spirit is greater than what you hear. The Bible says greater is he that's within me than he that is within the world. So I know there's some lions that you're looking at. I know there's some walls that you're trying to climb. I know there's some giants that you're trying to overcome. I know there's some things that you feel like would take you out. But can I suggest to you today that there's a lion you are called to chase and kill because your future depends on it. Here's Ben Ahia. And he chooses to take on the lion. And I want to suggest this today. What if the life you really want and the future that God wants for you is hiding in your biggest problem, your worst failure, and your greatest fear? What if the future that God wants for you is hiding in your biggest problem, your worst failure, or your greatest fear? Two things I want you to think about today, two things really quickly that I want you to think about today as we all prepare for chasing the lion of our lives. The first one is this, and it's a question because at the end of the day, when you leave church, the question is not what did pastor tell you to do. The question is what will you do with what you have? So the first question I want to ask you today is what are you chasing? What are you chasing? Notice ben is not just encounter the lion, he chases the lion. I did a little research on lions, and I was a little shocked by this. I mean, can we just be practical for a second? Rich, this is what messed me up. The lion, on average, is about 420 pounds, a male lion. A lion can run about 50 miles per hour. A lion is about four feet tall. The lion, by every statistic, should be the champion of this story. The lion, by every measurable data point, should have had an advantage. So the question we all have to ask ourselves is why in the world would Ben Ahia choose to chase that which had an advantage? Why in the world would Ben Ahia choose to chase that which should have killed it? And could I suggest to you, it's because Ben Ahia understood, here it is, you gotta understand about historical times, is that warriors would have been trained to not only deal with people, but to deal with the elements and the animals of their time. Watch this. See, what we don't see in the text is probably more important than what we do see. It's the training a warrior of their day and time would have went through. And, a day in, and their day and time, a, a soldier would have went through training not only to deal with the people that they would encounter in battle, but also the animals that might arrive or emerge in the midst of the wilderness that they were in and fighting. And so now, what you need to understand is behind the scenes, Ben Ahia understood something, that I'm not just trained to deal with people, I'm trained to deal with lions. I've been trained to deal with the beast. I've been trained to deal with that which is bigger. I've been trained to deal with that which is stronger. I've been trained to deal with that which is faster. Could I suggest to you that watch this, this pandemic, I know some people People think that this year is over. I know they think that you ain't been doing nothing for the last eight months, but could it be just maybe that the last eight months God has been training you for a battle that you ain't seen yet? Okay. Let me tell you. Could it be that there's some private development that has been happening? Could it be that, that God has been putting some peace in your spirit for some folk who are going to drive you crazy in 2021? Could it be that God has been creating confidence in you about some obstacles that you're going to see in the next year? Could it be that when you emerge next year out of isolation, people are going to be like, that would have scared you before, but now that you've had some time with God, now that you've had some time in the Word, now that you've been trained in the way, now you're ready for anything. Could it be that Ben Ahia shows us that the training in private prepares us for the battles in public? There's some things that God wants you to look at that he's been using not to watch this destroy you, but to develop you. I know you haven't liked the training, but what if the season that we are in and coming out of is one to develop you for the battle in front of you? Stop running away from what scares you most and start chasing the God-ordained opportunities that he's placed in your life. Some of you have removed your application because you told yourself you weren't qualified. Start chasing it. Some of you have decided not to go back to school because you thought, I'm not smart enough. Start chasing it. Some of you have decided not to write a book because you asked the question, who am I to write about something? Start chasing it. Some of you have convinced yourself that you're not worth what God created you for. Start chasing it. Because Ben Ahia understood he was built for this. Here's the second thing, though, and I think it's equally as important because it's one thing to chase something down, it's another thing to kill it. So the question I want to ask you today is, what are you conquering? What are you conquering? 
Because see, to chase it down is to get into the fight. And some of us, like me, got a big mouth. You can get into a fight real easy. But winning the fight is a different story. Let me be honest with y'all. I can't fight like that. I can't fight like that. Let me tell you two reasons why. Two reasons why. Number one, um, fighting takes an amount of cardio. Can I just, come on, have anybody been in a real fight? Like, don't you get tired real fast? Like, you just be like, stop playing. Like, look, let's just reconcile. Like, let's go to lunch. Like, we can resolve this another way. Other thing about fighting, though, is fighting is uh, uh, you got to understand that you have to be ready for the unexpected in a fight. You got to be ready for somebody to show up on the side. You got to be ready for somebody to show up behind you. you I, don't, I don't like fighting because, you know, it's too much to look for. You know, it used to be you just fight the one person. Now you got to look all around you. Could I suggest to you that that is exactly the reason why some of us avoid conquering the, the lion. We, 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 we talk ourselves into it. Come on, some of us have been here at the beginning of 2020. We talk ourselves into chasing the lion of our life. We talk ourselves into chasing the opportunity. And then when we get there, we don't conquer it. We shrink back. We let insecurity start speaking for us. We let fear of failure start speaking for us. We let opinions start speaking for us. Can I suggest to you today that you have to conquer that which you chase? Why? Here's what's crazy. If you read two verses later, Benahiah gets promoted to be a part of David's administration as a chief commander. Now, I have to imagine, Mr. Irvin, that when Benahiah saw the lion, he didn't know he would get a promotion. All he knew is that as everybody else is trying to get a higher position in the administration, this is going to look good on my resume. That not only can I kill soldiers, but I can kill the beast of my time. I have to imagine that as Benahiah looked at this lion, he didn't see the lion as an obstacle. He looked at it as an opportunity. He said, this is going to be on my resume to King David. That when David is looking at the type of person he wants to chief lead his bodyguard, he's going to say, he's going to be looking at resumes. He's going to be like, yeah, that's cool. They killed some people. Yeah, that's cool. They went into battle. Yes, that's cool. They, they throw an arrow. Yes, they're good. They have a spear. But oh my God, this person jumped into a snowy pit and killed a lion. I believe as David was looking at his application, that resume jumped off the pages. He began to say to himself for a minute, Lord, wait a minute, this is the type of person I need, a person who's not afraid to chase down stuff that other people are afraid of. This is the type of person I need, a person who will not allow people's opinion to make them turn around. This is the type of person I need. Could I suggest to you that the very thing you may be running from in the last season, God is trying to use as an opportunity to add to your resume. Okay, let me talk to 20 people today who've been walking in fear. God has been saying that there's some things that you've been scared of, but it's really a resume builder. You thought it was failure. It was a resume builder. You thought it was fear. It's a resume builder. You thought it was going to beat you up. It's a resume builder. And until you start looking at the lion differently, you will always run in fear to that which you should face in faith. It's a resume builder. It's a resume builder. There's some things in all of our lives that we can learn from being a higher need to be chased down, need to be conquered, so that in the next chapter, when God is ready to push us into our future, the evidence will be there that we're ready for it. It's a resume builder. This is what I believe God is doing for our church. We're having to exercise resilience because it's a resume builder. I know there's some people who will say, I'm afraid of what's going to happen next year. I believe God is going to grow our church exponentially next year. I don't care whether it's online. I don't care whether it's in person. I just believe that lives are going to be saved and people will be changed and suicides will be averted and divorces will be canceled and people's life will be transformed. Why? Because what we're going through now is just a resume builder. God is about to use some of your greatest challenges to be some of your greatest opportunities. It's a resume builder. And so maybe, just maybe we need to change the way we're thinking about the challenges of our day. I want to show you this quote, I'm going to be done, by Mark Batterson. It says, our best days often start out as our worst days. And our greatest opportunities are often disguised as our biggest problems. You can land in a pit with a lion on a snowy day, and it will seem like the end of the road, but God is in the recycling business. I'm going to bring this up here real quick. God is in the recycling business. He recycles past experiences. And he uses them to prepare us for future opportunities. That 
is the story of our life. That is the story of your life. I want you to look at something really quick. Justin, play a little bit for me. I know that on social media, this is what I've been hearing a whole lot. Some of y'all been saying this, so point yourself out if you're guilty. 2020 is trash. Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. 2020 is trash. Throw it away. Throw the whole year away. Right? But what if what other people are throwing away, God wants you to recycle? See, here's what is happening. There's some things that don't feel good. There's some things that aren't ideal. Undoubtedly, there's some pain that we're experiencing. Undoubtedly, there's some fears and some anxieties that legitimately emerge. But what if the thing that you're trying to throw away, God is trying to recycle? What if the call of God on your life in this season is not to throw the year away? But to say, no, 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 no. God never wastes anything. God never wastes a season. God never wastes a moment. God never wastes a tear. God never wastes a dis destruction. God never wastes waste a defeat. God never wastes a moment in my life. And what God is about to do in my life is a resume building moment. God is about to take this season and he wants me to recycle it. God said, I know that everybody said it meant for your evil, but I'm saying it's meant for your good. God said, I want you to get a Romans anointing in your spirit to say all things work to the good of those who love God and are called according to its purpose. So while others are throwing it away, I want you to recycle that thing. I want you to make up in your mind, if God be for me, it's more than the world against me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus within me. Recycle it. Why waste those tears? Why waste that pain? Why waste the frustration? Why waste the hurt? Why waste the discipline? Why waste it all when God is in the recycling business? And God will take that which the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for your good. But it starts with us chasing that which we've been running from. To look at the lions of our life and say, if God be for me, it's more than the world against me. Would you do me a favor? Would you close your eyes all over this room? I want to pray for you now. Maybe you're watching online. Maybe you're in the room and you're saying, there's some things that I've been running from. Look, some of you have been running from family. And as the holidays present themselves, you're saying, I've been running from this conversation for so long. And God is saying, chase the lion. For some of you, you've been running from the pain of your past. For some of you, you've been running from your own truth. Some of you have been running from opportunity because you feel unworthy. For some of you, you've been running from people that you don't want to reconcile with. For some of you, you've been running, you've been running, you've been running, and you've been scared, and you've been fearful. And God is saying, it's time to chase the line. It's time for you to go after it. It's time for you to jump into that place on a snowy pit and to declare that I am a champion. And I am the one who will see God's hand of favor on my life. Lord God, I pray now that as all of us approach this season that we would chase the lion. Chase the thing that has been scaring us. And now, oh God, I pray that you would give us the courage to move forward knowing that if God before us is more than the world against us. God, we know that you are a God of yes and amen. We know that you are God, that word never returns to him void. So we declare right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We declare right now that greater is he that's within us. We declare right now that you can do exceedingly and abundantly. God, every word that we need to start declaring over our life to give us the courage to chase instead of running away, we declare right now it is so. And now, no God, there may be one who's watching this right now. Maybe they're sitting at home. Maybe they're riding in their car. Maybe they're in this room right now, and they need to accept you as their Lord and Savior. They've been afraid to come into a relationship with you because they felt like they weren't perfect. They felt like they don't know all the scripture. They don't know all the songs. They don't know what to do. 
May they be reminded today that you are a God that gives them the best gift ever, a gift of eternal life. And that you loved them before they even loved themselves. That you gave your only begotten son that whosoever will believe in you shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God, would you allow us to see your hand and to connect with your heart today, reaching out to us. We pray this prayer now for somebody who's saying, I want to know Jesus for myself and I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to let you know this today. God doesn't care about what you did last year. Last month, last night, right now in this moment, redemption is available. Grace is available. Another chance is available. All you have to do is repeat after me and let's all say this together in the room. We say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my spirit. From this day forward, I commit my life to you. I thank you for the gift of salvation. And I will walk committed to your ways and your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said together, amen, amen, and amen.